So this is one of those cheap um, clock kits that you can buy on uh, eBay or AliExpress or whatever. The reference number for this one is SH-E space 879. It uses a, an Atmel uh, AT, uh, 89C2051 uh, and you see it's got a six segment, uh, six seven segment display um, you can put a battery on it if you want a coin battery but I'm just running it off the uh, off a supply here it's just got the one push button so I wanted to normally the, the code it comes with it just runs a clock but I wanted to make it into a stopwatch so if you download and install I'm, I'm using uh, Windows here but you can do this on Linux as well Download and install the uh, SDCC, stands for Small Device C Compiler, that can compile codes for this. And you can see I've written a, a program here called uh, stopwatch.c, that's it, it's very short, I'll put, put the code in the link. And uh, you'll see in the, um, in the comments there I've put a how to compile it. So you go to um, a, uh, a DOS prompt, command prompt, whatever you want to call it. Type in that, go to the folder where you've stored that file and type in that command and it, and it just does it. So if I do, it only takes half a second or so to compile it. And you can see it produces assembly listings and all sorts of interesting stuff. But the file we actually want is this one called stopwatch.ihx, which is the uh, Intel hex format. Now I've got here uh, my uh, programmer for programming these things based on a, uh, using a Arduino Mega and a little circuit board, but you could use any programmer you want. Um, so if we run my program, which is this uh, AT89 programmer, so let me just see if I can zoom in a bit so you can see that. So if you're running my programmer, uh, the first thing you do is uh, read the chip signature bytes and if it's all good it will tell you it's uh, 1E21FF then you can erase the chip and it says erase command sent and then if you uh, read the program from the chip it will read it all in and it will say memory appears to be blank which is what we want. You, you have to blank it before you program it with uh, you using my program. It doesn't erase the bytes that are already there. So now we're going to load that hex file, which is stopwatch.ihx. Uh, let's make the window a bit bigger so we can see the whole thing. Oops. There we are. Oops. So that's all there is to it, and I'm now going to uh, write program to chip, which is that one there. You get a progress bar, and uh, and then we can verify it as well to make sure that it's uh, read back OK. It says verified OK. So finally, we don't have to, but we can power down the chip. That just uh, removes any power from it while we're unplugging it. Uh, so we can uh, take it out now and stick it in the uh, in the board and we should now have a, a stopwatch instead of a clock. Uh, yeah, I've got that the right way around. So power it up. Um, very simple operation. Press the button and it runs. You've got hundreds of seconds, seconds and, and minutes. Um, if you press short press the button, 
it uh, temporarily freezes it but it's still running in the background so it's like a sort of lap timer so if I stop it now you can see I stopped it at 18.78 seconds but a short press and we're now carrying on from 27 seconds so it was still running in the background um, when you want to reset it back to zero just give it a long press but you could stop it first typically see your final stop time long press and it goes back to zero ready to start again um, so that's it very simple well, I think it's probably a more useful use of one of these little kit boards than the original uh, clock that comes with it. Now the problem is that the original clock code can't be read out of the chip, they protect it so you then have to recreate the clock code if you want to turn it back into a clock and I've done that with both a, a 12 hour and a 20, 24 hour version so I'll show you those next. So now for the uh, 12 hour clock code, if you're using my programmer, well, whichever programmer you're using, um, the hex file I've called the uh, clock 12h.hex, um, uh, open that, um, burn that to the, to the, uh, to the chip. Now, I've made it so that uh, when it comes on, it comes on in clock setting mode, because without a real time clock that's the most sensible way. So you can see it's, uh, it's flashing the digit that's going to change. And if we, do a, if we do a long press, it changes to the next digit, another long press, it's changing the hour short press changes whichever one is currently flashing uh, when you get to the seconds you can't actually change that but if you uh, when you press it uh, short press it it'll start running from the current time so I'm going to set this to uh, 9 15 that's just coming up so we want one two three four five long press one long press seven eight nine long press to get the seconds flashing so I'm looking at my reference clock now three two one now so that set it to start at exactly uh, nine fifteen and you can see in 12 hour mode it doesn't bother to show a leading zero uh, but obviously it will show a leading one for uh, 10, 11 and 12 o'clock. So that's it, that's all it does on the 12 hour one and if you want to reset it once it's running just uh, long press and you're back into setting again. So um, when you finish setting it, it'll always start from seconds 00. So I'm now moving it on to 9.16 and there's uh, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, mark. And there we are. So it's now showing the correct time. So that's 12 hour clock mode.